Hey, what's up, my true seekers? How are you doing? Welcome back to my channel, Real Talk with your girl, Lady D. As you can see, I went ahead and made a video. Uh, I wanted to go ahead and do a live, which the live is much easier. You know, but as you can see right here, I'm more of a visual person because no more of these hocus pocus lies. The truth is out, as plain as day. And the ones that follow me, they know that I am very passionate, you know, when it comes to my work, even though it's not easy being that you know, when it comes to our history, it's pretty much have been erased. All we have now is traces of historical events and our DNA. So guys, make sure you go ahead and hit like, comment, and share these videos for more unapologetic content. Because like I said, the truth is slowly, but it will find its way back home. You know, there's a lot of questions out there, especially when it comes to this Bible, you know, as they say, it is the word of God, you know, or is it stories just to go off head and just justify, you know, slavery, you know, which, you know, we already know that they did a lot of stuff, how they came in as missionaries, you know, came in like they came to Africa as peace, knowing that it was no peace nowhere in them. These people came in and before you know it, they went ahead and colonized just about the entire continent of Africa. And also is another question out there where I saw, how do we know that the Bible wasn't tampered with by people in power who wanted to use the text to their advantage? How do we know that? Because we know that they came in and they captured so many slaves and packed them in this ship that's called the Good Jesus. So guys, like I said, you know, when it comes to our history, the rabbit hole goes deep, but it's up to us how far we are willing to go ahead and dig. So like I said, this is not to go ahead and condemn the Bible. I'm not telling you to go ahead and just throw it away. But what I am telling you guys is to make sure that you rightfully divide the word of truth because the scripture does say that a workman should not be ashamed of rightfully dividing the word. And like I said on several of my videos that my content is not for everybody, but this is for people that is seeking the truth. People that is sick and tired of being sick and tired of. And this generation right here, you know, they are seeking for the truth, you know, no more, like I said, no more of these hocus pocus because this right here is the age of technology. And like I said, you know, Google have a huge search engine, which we got to watch Google as well, because, you know, like I said, you know, these people going to try to hide the truth as long as they can. But sooner or later, you know, the truth is going to find its way back home. Then are ye my disciples indeed, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. But this generation right here, you know, they're not going to just take anyone at their word. You know, they're going to, you know, pretty much go and question everything. It's not how it was with us, you know, because we was taught whatever is in the Bible, that's the word of God and it's settled. But this generation right here, you know, like I said, they are more woke. They gonna research everything because there's a lot of stuff that does not add up with scientific facts. Which, you know, I don't understand why we even have to even talk about this. Because, first of all, you know, if we want to go out there and research our history, knowing that everything about us have been erased and is upsetting people, then, to me, it makes us want to research even more. Wow! What idiots! <laughs> He's right. Yeah, a bunch of idiots. But I wonder how much they paid him to go ahead and tell the truth. But yeah, guys, we have gotten so comfortable, you know, sitting at the feet 
when the entire house is ours and they know it like i said on several of my videos that they know us better than we know ourselves <laughs> And right here, let me go ahead and read it. This right here is coming from the book of Proverbs 30, 5 and 6. And this right here, uh, the NIV Bible, it says, every word of God is flawless. Now, in the King James Bible, it says that every word of God is pure. But let me go ahead and read this one first. It says, every word of God is flawless. He's a sheer to those who take refuge in him. Do not add to his word. Or he will rebuke you and prove you a liar. Now, if the Most High God said that no man shall add or take away from the word, then why did King James and other Bible scholars went ahead and revised it? Because we all know as descendants of slaves that it did not benefit us. So let's go ahead and check it out and see why did King James felt the need to go ahead and revise the Bible. And I don't want to hear from you guys saying that uh, our forefathers was under the curses of Moses or some other this stuff that these people are feed to us because like I said enough is enough no more of these hocus pocus lies we still trust the bible being that the good book have been altered edited revised and tampered with pretty much before the King James version it was called the Geneva Bible now I don't know if you guys are familiar with the Geneva Bible but before King James had revised it, it was said to be one of the most historically significant translation of the Bible into English. So the Bible was already in English. And many people had said that the reason why King James went ahead and revised the Bible because he wanted to be in English, but the Geneva Bible was already there. And it had preceded the King James Version 51 years ago. So quite obvious, you know, the Bible was already there before King James and his inspired 12 uh, chosen men by God went ahead and revised it. And also it was talking about in the Geneva Bible, uh, Shakespeare uh, poems, most of what he was saying, he was really quoting out of the uh, scripture. Just like with the riddles, you know, remember Humpty Dumpty set on the wall. That is all real. I'm going to go in and talk about that, which not now, but another time. Humpty Dumpty was Eli. He was the one that was sitting on the wall and he was the one that had fell backwards and he had fallen. He was also obese, which that's another story. Right here, you know, what does the Most High God say is about tampering with the Bible, which we're going to go ahead and talk about it because there are many scriptures out there that will tell you about the punishment when you tamper with the word of God. And this right here is coming from Deuteronomy 4 and 2, the King James Version. It says, you shall not add unto the word which I command you, neither shall you diminish or from it, that you may keep the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you. Now, if the Most High God is saying that you should not add or take away from it, and it is in the Word, you know, and you put it in there, then what makes you feel that, you know, you can go ahead and tamper with it? So let's go ahead and continue on. Add uh, thy not unto his word, lest he reprove thee, and thy be found a liar. Why was the Bible revised? Right here, it says, every word of God is pure. He's a sheer unto them that put their trust in him. Add thy not unto his word, lest he reprove thee, and thy shall be found a liar. I said, so let's go ahead and read what the King James Version says about do not add or take away from the word of God. And this out of the New King James Version, same uh, chapter 30 and 6, where it says, do not add to his word, lest he rebuke you, and you be found a liar. So let's go to the New King James Version, same chapter and verse, and that's 30 and 5, where it says, Every word of God is pure. He is a sheer to those who put their trust in him. Do not add to his word, lest he rebuke you, and you be found a liar. So right there it says, Every word of God is pure. 
So if every word of God is pure, what was the need of revising the Bible? What is the need for the Bible being passed down for over 1,500 years or more by so many different authors? So let's go ahead and see what Jeremiah 14 says. This right here is Jeremiah 14. We're going to start with 14, Jeremiah 14 and 14. It reads, and the Lord said to me, the prophet prophesies lies in my name. I have not sent them, command them, nor spoken to them. They prophesied to you a false vision of a nation spirit. Div divination is a person that have like a, a demon spirit. And these people, they are coming saying that the most high God had called them. God has not called them. And some of these people, which we're going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and show you guys that these people, they did not have the act of God. If anything, they had the act of a devil because half of the stuff that they did saying they did in the name of Jesus, that was not the act of God. Right here, it says, let me go ahead and read it again. And the Lord said to me, the prophet prophesied lies in my name. I have not sent them, command them, nor spoke to them. They prophesied to you false visions, divination, a worthless thing, and the deceit of their heart. Therefore, thus says the Lord concerning the prophet who prophesied in my name, whom I did not send. And who said, sworn and famine shall not be in the land. Therefore, thus says the Lord concerning the prophets who prophesied in my name, whom I did not send. And who say, sword and famine shall not be in their land. But sword and famine, those prophets shall be consumed. So you see right there, their time is almost up. And as you can see right now, they are being exposed because the Most High God did not call these people. They called themselves. So let's see what 14 and 16 says. And the people to whom they prophesy shall be cast out in the streets in Jerusalem because of the famine and the sword. They will have no one to bear them, them nor their wives, their son nor their daughter, for I will pour their wickedness on them. Therefore, you shall say this word to them. Let my eyes flow with tears night and day, and let them not cease. For the virgin daughter of my people has been broken with mighty strokes, with a very severe blow. So right there, the Most High God is letting you know that he did not call these people. These people came prophesying in his name, but he did not call these people at all. So that's what we doing. We rightfully divide the word of truth. You know, this generation right here, they're not going to take their word, you know, they want to, you know, they want to make sure. And the reason why, because it's so much stuff that has happened, so much stuff that had went on. And why was the Bible revised? You know, if it was flawless, the King James uh, says pure. So why was it uh, revised? So that's exactly what we are talking about. And the next question is, how do we know the Bible is accurate? So if the original one was lost. How was you able to come to the conclusion that God said it. And just like I had said in the book of Jeremiah, God said he did not call these people. These people went ahead and they have called themselves. So like I said, how can we say that those are the words of God? 